All right, back to my problem here. All right. So consumers and firms. Consumers are A and B, firms are one and two. All right. So, all right. Now I'm going to make some assumptions that are kind of innocuous because I just want to define one and two and A and B. So, two prefers high quality more than one. Basically, in my picture, that means twos in difference curves are always steeper than ones, right? They always got steeper in difference curves. They're not higher or lower. That doesn't make any sense. They're in difference curves. Just whenever they cross, twos are going to cross from below. They're going to be steeper. Yeah? Oh, sorry. A, God, man. Bs prefer higher quality than A. I might, I'm really messing up on my notation today. B's prefer higher, prefer higher quality more than A's do. So that's going to define my B's, OK? That defines my A's and B's. Now, for 1 and 2, I'm going to make the following assumption. I'm going to assume that C2 of Q is less than C1 of Q, OK? And I'm going to assume that C2 prime of Q is less than C1 prime of Q. This is a special case, and we, you can vary these all you want. So the idea is type 2 firms have lower costs than type 1 firms for any given quality, and they have lower marginal costs, which is kind of the picture I drew over there, right? I sort of assumed the 2s were the low-cost firms and they were also the firms that would produce higher quality. OK? Everybody understand? So the two's cost curve is lower, but it's also flatter. Right? So like if the one's cost curve, one's look like this, two's look like this. Right? They're, they're always flatter, and they're lower. C1 of Q, C2 of Q. All right. That's my, that's my assumption. I'm assuming the two's not only are lower cost, they actually have a lower marginal cost of quality. So they're lower average cost and lower marginal cost. You'll see it doesn't really matter. That's just part of the story. All right. All right. So now, let's think about it. All right. So does anybody see anything about the equilibrium already? And I'll assume that N1 plus N2 is bigger than NA plus NB. That is, the number of producers is greater than the number of consumers. And I'll continue with my assumption that N1 is less than NA plus NB, and N2 is also less than NA plus NB. Right? So that's my assumption. What is, what, what, what is the import of those assumptions I just made? Right? This, get, this is going to restrict the equilibrium in kind of important ways. What would you say? All right, immediately I know, based on just those assumptions, a lot about this equilibrium. Yeah. So, so right, assuming we, assuming this, so this tells us what? That, that one type of firm is going to earn zero profit, right? That together with this means we know which one earns zero profits. We know it's the ones earn zero profits. This tells us both types of firms are going to have to produce an equilibrium, right? We're going to need both types, right? So we've kind of narrowing down the equilibrium here. We know one, we know pi one equals zero, pi two greater than zero. Okay, we know that already, right? That's what we know so far. All right, so what else do we know? What do we know? Who's going to buy? Who's going to buy from the twos? Who must be buying from the twos in equilibrium? 
The twos exist. Somebody's buying from them. Who must be buying from the twos? Well, who wants quality more? Who's going to produce more quality? The twos, they got lower marginal costs, so they're going to produce. Everybody sees why this tells us if any, the twos are going to have to produce the higher quality. Because if the twos want to do it, if the ones wanted to produce the higher quality, the twos clearly would want to do it because they got lower incremental costs. Now, if you look on the demand side, you'd say if the A's wanted to buy the higher quality, then the B's would certainly want to buy the higher quality. So we know B's will, right? That is, the B's will buy from two for sure. Some of the B's at least. Who buys from the ones? Well, somebody. A's will. All right. So the A's are going to have to buy from the ones. So at least some A's are going to buy from the ones. At least some of the B's will buy from the twos. That doesn't quite completely determine the equilibrium, however. What else do we need to know? Yeah. Okay. Well, in my, no, that's that's not a. I've assumed this is a competitive marketplace, so we're going to assume you can't price discriminate, right? That is, you're not going to be able to charge different people different prices. That's an equilibrium outcome, not. It's not something exogenous we're throwing on the system, right? There's, 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 we're going to assume everybody maximizes profits. Consumers are free to move from one firm to the other. There ain't going to be any price discrimination in equilibrium, right? 